So that is in the story also. And there's my mother as an adult playing Neo Koto. My mother is very beautiful. She, uh, I don't know if my grandmother wanted her to uh, take these lessons to retain her Japanese culture or to um, show America the Japanese culture, but my mother performed both in singing and playing the Okoto and in Japanese dancing. And then the, the, one of the main seeds is that my grandfather, my Oji-san, was murdered by two black boys shortly after the internment. And that did affect my mother in a, in a very, very sad way. Um, and this is an actual clipping of the newspaper article about my grandfather's murder. I've, I've taken the names out and most of the details, but I believe it was in 1951 that that happened. So that was long before I was born. But they basically beat him up and killed him for $8 in his pocket. Uh, so this, this story became the third I have three points of view in my book. I have Sachi Kimura, who is a nine-year-old Japanese-American who kind of follows my mother. Nobu is her 17-year-old brother. And Terrence is who I kind of uh, took after this young man who, I, I have his name, but I can't remember it. I can't even remember it now. It, there were two boys. But anyway, um, Terrence's story is completely different, though, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So this is my mother and I, you guys may have seen this in the newspaper. Um, I'm guessing it must have been about October of 1958 because I was born in January and I'm guessing I'm about 10 months old there, but I'm not sure. And this is uh, just in the last couple of years. And she is still living. And then this is kind of the final seed to the story. Um, I recently found this uh, quote by Albert Einstein, but it kind of, um, reinforces the way that I feel based on some of the experiences that I've had that uh, it seems to me that more and more these days it's difficult for people to talk about their differences and I think that's very damaging because we don't understand each other anymore and I think that causes a lot of um, separation and anger and hatred sometimes and I mean the best thing I can relate it to in current times for me is, uh, is politics. Uh, you know, nobody, it's like so many people think we have to all believe the same politically and when you think about it that's ridiculous and yet nobody can, can talk about their differences without getting angry. Which I'm not sure if you've heard of before but this was the document that pretty much started the wheels of internment rolling. It was signed by President Roosevelt on February 19, 1942, uh, so a couple of months after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And it cleared the way for Japanese Americans to be sent to internment camps. Uh, basically, and I've tried to read this when it's on the screen and I can't, but basically what it says is that the Japanese Americans were to stay out of certain areas. Uh, they had to be under curfew and they had just a few days to pack their belongings and report to a civil control station to be sent away to an internment camp. Tule Lake? Topaz? Canberran? Yeah. That's way up the middle of the Now, Canberran is a racetrack. That's, so it must be Tule Lake or Topaz. Tule Lake. Yeah. Tule Lake. Yeah. That's in the middle of nowhere. It is. That's the one my mom took us to see. Yeah. She was at Tule Lake first, and then when Tule Lake became a maximum security camp for the disloyal, she was sent to Topaz. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Um, I'm going to read another little segment in Sachi's point of view, and if you want to follow it's on page 66. Uh, this is a scene where Sachi and her mother are walking to the grocery store and they come across, they, they turn onto Gilman Street, which is one of the main streets in Berkeley, and they see these white pieces of paper flopping in the wind, and it's, it's these executive orders giving them instructions. 
The sky was clear and blue, and the sun warmed Sachi between brushes of cool sea breezes that blew in from the bay. Spring bloomed all around. Red tulips, purple pansies, yellow daffodils, emerald lawns. Perfectly groomed houses bordered both sides of the street, like finely dressed boys and girls lining the walls of a dance room. When they turned on to Gilman Street, traffic sounds replaced bird song. The street hummed with passing cars and an occasional honking horn at a stoplight. Spring, summer, fall, or winter, not much changed about this busy street. But that afternoon, something was different. White sheets of paper hung off streetlights and utility poles, flapping in the wind as though calling everyone's attention. Store windows were plastered with them, too. People slowed to read the words, forming small crowds everywhere. Mama took Sachi's hand and pulled her over to where several Japanese had gathered. Some scratched notes on small pieces of paper they held with hands that trembled as they wrote. Sachi stood on her toes to try to read the words, but the grown-ups were too tall. She jumped up and caught a glimpse of the bold letters at the top of the notice. Instructions to all persons of Japanese ancestry. Mama searched her purse and pulled out a pen and a piece of paper. Sachi was able to read some of what her mother wrote. All Japanese persons, both alien and non-alien, will be evacuated from the above designated area by 12 o'clock noon, Tuesday, April 7, 1942. Responsible member of each family must report to civil control station between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., Thursday, April 2, 1942. The size and number of packages is limited to that which can be carried by the individual or family group. Go to the civil control station to receive further instructions. Whispers hissed through the crowd. Some people shook their heads and walked away. Mama returned the pen and paper to her purse and took Sachi's hand. What did the sign say, she asked. Maybe Mama's answer would take away the bad feeling that made her stomach hurt. She put her other hand in her pocket and felt the crumbled cookies and paper.